Okay, so Potter sequence. First off, before I go ahead and read the first aid, I'd like to concentrate on what's written, Potter sequence. So first of all, what is a sequence? I know that sounds stupid, but this is very important for the USMLE. What is a sequence? What is a sequence? A sequence is abnormalities, abnormalities that result from a single primary embryologic event from a single primary embryologic event now this is very important to know that it's a single primary embryologic event single as in only one event and embryologic because it happens in the embryologic period right so for example in the case of potter sequence the single primary embryologic event causing Potter sequence is oligohydramnios, and this is very, very important in the USMLE, right? So a lot of times the USMLE is going to test you on the types of errors in morphogenesis where you need to distinguish sequence from malformation, from deformation, from disruption, hypoplasia, aplasia, and all these things. So what is a malformation? First of all, What's an example of a malformation? A cleft lip or palate is a malformation. What does that mean? That means something happened when the when the baby was in the embryonic period, right? It happens intrinsically. So it's an intrinsic, intrinsic developmental defect, like a cleft lip or palate, right? And it happens during the embryonic period, okay? It happens during the embryonic period. In contrast, when I'm saying I'm having a deformation, what's an example of a deformation? It's what is known as congenital torticollis. Now, deformation is something that's going to happen when the baby is born, right? So it happens during the fetal period, and it's due to an extrinsic mechanical distortion. So if you contrast malformation from deformation, malformation is intrinsic during the embryonic period, while deformation is extrinsic during the fetal period. Well, there are many other examples which you could go ahead and read on your own. I'm going to try to focus on the subject on hand, which is Potter sequence. So again, Potter sequence. Potter sequence. A sequence is many abnormalities which will result from a single underlying cause. And we said that the underlying cause in Potter sequence is oligohydramnios. Now with that, in, with that said, let's go ahead and read what's written in the first aid. It says that oligohydramnios, oligohydramnios is going to lead to the compression of the developing fetus. And this is going to lead to the limb deformities like club feet and facial anomalies like close set ears and retrognathia, flattened nose and compression of the chest and the lack of amniotic fluid aspiration to the fetal lung is going to cause pulmonary hypoplasia which ends up being the cause of death and it is caused what are the causes aha uh -huh. what are the causes of Potter sequence caused by chronic placental insufficiency or reduced fetal urine output including things like autosomal recessive polycystic disease, obstructive uropathy, aka posterior urethral valves, bilateral renal agenesis is a very high yield cause, okay, high yield in yellow, preterm premature rupture of membranes or PPROM, and maternal ACE inhibitor use. And then here they say babies who can't pee in utero develop Potter sequence. So, they just, this is a silly mnemonic, but this is a good mnemonic. To remember, Potter sequence is associated with Potter, as in P for pulmonary hypoplasia, which is extremely high yield, that ends up being the cause of death. O for oligohydramnios, which is the trigger for the whole sequence itself. This is the bad guy, because he triggered everything, oligohydramnios. T for twisted face, T for twisted skin, E for extremity defects, these, these are all limb deformities, and R for renal failure in utero. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is, if you're reading uh, first aid, you could stare at your first aid book, but I want to reference a very nice picture that I saw online of Potter sequence. First of all, they go ahead and explain what normally happens in the fetus. Now, this is a very nice fetus surrounded by the amniotic fluid. Now, if you look, the baby is supposed to pee, right? Now, the way this happens is that there's nowhere for the pee to go, right? For the urine to go. So what happens is that the baby is going to swallow some of that pee. So amniotic fluid 
technically is some pee that the baby makes, right? So the baby is going to urinate and then drink some of that urine, aka the amniotic fluid. Now, whenever we're talking about Potter sequence, what is the cause of Potter sequence? What is the cause? The cause is that there's some type of kidney issue, right? If you think about it, there's some kind of kidney issue. Generally, it's bilateral renal agenesis. This is the most high yield cause or underlying cause of Potter sequence. Now, this bilateral renal agenesis is what will end up causing, if you think about it, there's no kidney. If there's no kidney due to whatever cause, whether it's a polycystic kidney disease or uropathy or renal hyperplasia, then there will be less urine or even no urine. What does that mean? Less amniotic fluid. That means this is called oligohydramnios. What does oligohydramnios even mean? Oligo means less hydra is water and amnios is the amnios so less fluid in the amnion or the amniotic fluid oligohydramnios so if you think about it if the baby is having oligohydramnios the amniotic fluid really kept the baby uh very comfortable and it's like it acted like a cushion now that since we're having less of that then it's going to compress that fetus to death and this compression is going to if you think about it it compressed everything it compressed the way they look so that's why they have the potter facies also compressed their lungs that's why they have pulmonary hypoplasia which ends up being the most common cause of death here and what do you mean by it compressed their their facies uh, so really you could look at things like club feet, epicantal uh, folds, flat nose, low set ears and all these things. Okay, so this is a very nice creative overview of Potter sequence. Um, let's go ahead and uh, do a sample USMLE style question. So this is the question, you could go ahead and read it. Uh, here we're having a 32-year-old woman at 22 weeks gestation undergoes a routine ultrasound, which reveals a bilateral renal agenesis, a bilateral renal agenesis, high yield in the fetus. The amniotic fluid index is significantly decreased. At birth, the neonate has flattened facial features, limb deformities, and respiratory distress. Okay, now despite resuscitation efforts, the infant dies shortly after birth. This is high yield. Okay, which of the following is the most immediate cause of death in this patient? So we're looking for death. Why did this baby die? So if you think about it, this baby is having bilateral renal agenesis, which, as we discussed, is the primary cause of Potter sequence, right? Uh, also, they had some type of, uh, they're asking about what is the most immediate cause of death. So this is typical Potter sequence, right? We could agree that this is typical Potter sequence. What is the most common cause of death in uh, Potter sequence? You're going to ask yourself, you're going to think, oh, I just thought it to myself, it was pulmonary hypoplasia. So the answer is going to be severe pulmonary hypoplasia b so what is the key assembly takeaway point here is that the lethal aspect of potter sequence is pulmonary hypoplasia let's go to question number two. First of all what do they want underlying morphogenetic error responsible for this condition 25 year old permigravida presents for a routine prenatal ultrasound at 20 week gestation at 20 week gestation. The scan reveals bilateral renal agenesis, severe oligohydramnios, and a flattened fetal profile. So this is typical for Potter sequence. The parents are informed of a poor prognosis. At birth, the neonate exhibits flattened faces, low set ears, limb contractures, and severe respiratory distress. Despite resuscitation efforts, infant dies shortly after birth. Which of the following best describes the underlying morphogenetic error responsible for this condition? As I said, this is Potter sequence, so this is going to be D, right? This is going to be D. So Potter sequence, like I said, it results from a single primary defect. In this case, that's going to be the renal agenesis, and the renal agenesis is what caused all the mess, right? Uh, including the severe oligohydramnios, and then the oligohydramnios caused a whole lot of mess, like pulmonary hypoplasia, which, end, which ended up being the death of the neonate. Uh, so remember, a sequence occurs when a single embryologic event, in this case, the embryologic event was oligohydramnios, technically, 
and it triggers multiple abnormalities and it's always in a predictable pattern. Why other answers are wrong? Well, first of all, malformation. Malformation, remember what I said about malformation, like a neural tube defect or a cleft lip? Malformation, it's an intrinsic defect. That means that it happens during the, uh, it happens when the baby's still an embryo. Uh, disruption. Disruption is an external force damaging previously normal structure like the amniotic band syndrome. Um, deformation is an extrinsic mechanical force altering normal development. For example, clubfoot is a deformation. Uh, so this happens when a baby is a fetus, right? Unlike, unlike um, malformation. So deformation is extrinsic, extrinsic while malformation is intrinsic. And then dysplasia is an abnormal organization of cells or tissue, like osteogenesis imperfecta. Uh, so the key US only takeaway point here is that Potter sequence is a single defect. In that case, it's renal agenesis, which triggered a chain reaction of abnormalities. All right, that'll be it for Potter sequence.